SpaceX is ready to launch the largest and the most powerful rocket ever built on Earth. The Starship's first orbital test flight will result in one of the most significant aeronautical achievements of all time or fail spectacularly. There will be a plenty of excitement. Elon Musk said it's going to happen this month in February 2023 or is it? Let's start with the elephant in the room. This guy needs to improve at forecasting timelines. He could be the greatest entrepreneur of the 21st century, a brilliant engineer, or even a space alien for all we know. But one thing is sure, man has no notion of time. Perhaps it doesn't exist in his world. So, when Elon makes a forecast about when an event will take place, we take it with a big mouthful of salt. I've recently been dumping the entire box of salt on my face every time. It has not been good for my skin, then I would not recommend it. But for the first time in this nearly two-year trip, we have definitive called complex data that the Starship is ready to take a great leap into space. The launch vehicle and the ground infrastructure supporting the launch are two key components here. Both are equally critical to success. Starting the Starship and Super Heavy Booster, this is not only the largest and most powerful rocket ever built, but it's also the first rocket designed to be reusable. This means that the both first stage booster and the upper stage ship will land safely and be ready to fly again. These rockets are not only reusable but they are also meant to be quickly reusable. Let's use the Falcon 9 to scale the only operational reusable orbital rocket. After 6 years of successful recoveries, SpaceX has reduced the turnaround time for this booster to around 1 week. With the extra heavy champion, the SpaceX hopes to reduce the refurbishing time to about 1 hour. Elon has stated that he wants these boosters to fly at peak cadence 3 times per day. The higher stage ship will likely fly once each day. Those days are long since they must travel up to orbit, deliver a payload, and then return to be refitted with new payload. To get where we are now, the ship and the booster have gone through multiple versions and several rounds of testing. In the summer of 2021, the first full-stack starship was assembled. That was booster number 4, and ship number 20 was most likely a coincidence. Those two were expected to go to space by the end of the year. With the timelines, you can see what I mean. About two years later, rocket number 7 and ship number 24 were finally ready for launch, which is how we know. SpaceX executed a wet dress rehearsal test on January 24th. What in the world is that? They're edging the rocket to the verge of launch and then shutting it down. But in all seriousness, this is a critical test for the entire launch mechanism. They go through the complete launch protocol, filing both stages of the rocket with fuel, going through the whole system's check and countdown procedure, and then stopping the clock just before the engines would have ignite if this were an actual launch. This is a rigorous test of the vehicle's internal plumbing system and external construction. Both the rocket fuel and the Starship's oxidizer are cryogenic liquids. Methane in oxygen and liquid form. To transfer gases into drinks, they must be super chilled to hundreds of degrees below zero. We already know the metal expands and contracts with temperature. So, when a rocket sitting out in the South Texas sun all day is pumped fuel of hygienic fuel, a significant amount of physical stress is put on the metal structure. This is why SpaceX has already performed numerous cryo-proofing experiments on their rockets. But first, they fill the gasoline tank with liquid nitrogen and wait to see what happens. The rocket collapses in on itself like aluminum can, indicating that it is not strong enough. So, if you look at the Starship wet dress rehearsal, we can see the frost has covered practically the whole rocket. The ultra-cold stainless steel reacts with the humid air of the Gulf of Mexico. That massive plume from the booster is vented methane gas that has warmed up enough to boil out but is still extremely cold. It's causing a large cloud of condensation to form in the air. The presence of ice on the rocket indicates the presence of a fuel tank inside. So the empty cargo bay is at the very top with no frost. That is where the payload will be deployed and eventually, humans will live on voyages to the moon and Mars. It's very crazy. According to SpaceX, the Starship passed this critical test with flying colors. Remember last year's fiasco surrounding NASA's SLS moon rocket launch? The rocket never really made it through a wet dress rehearsal. Every time they attempted to fill the rocket with fuel, something went wrong and the operation was halted. It was usually a gasoline leak or an associated system failure, but none of these happened with the Starship. So the next phase will still be a full engine static fire test in which they will strap the booster down and light all the engines to ensure everything works as it should. So far, SpaceX has fired 14 Raptor 2 machines at once from the Super Heavy Booster. That means we don't know what will happen when they put the entire Raptor firm on fire. 
even if they keep the engines throttled down, the sheer force of them all sparking and burning will almost certainly be the most potent engine test the world has ever witnessed. The ancient Soviet N1 rocket test from the mid-1960s still holds the record. It flew a few hundred feet before exploding in a gigantic fireball, setting the global record for the most powerful non-nuclear artificial explosion ever seen. Hopefully, Starship will not suffer the same fate. Even though a wet dress rehearsal is still possible, SpaceX evacuated the entire village of Boca Chica and halted all operation at their Starship manufacturing site, indicating that they expect a catastrophic failure to have a destructive impact for several miles around the launch site, but it is unlikely to happen. So while Elon Musk is hurrying for result, his SpaceX team works deliberately and meticulously to provide the best chance of success. Now, thank you for reaching this point. Make sure to finish this video to know more. But before we continue, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to this channel and like, comment, share, and hit the notification bell for more upcoming videos like this. Elon stood down as CEO of Starbase several months ago. Then, for whatever reason, he returned to California to spend his day sleeping on a Twitter office floor. Still, he handed over the reins to SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell, who has been the driving force behind the company's success for the past decade. She completes task. Gwen Shotwell is the yin to Elon Musk's yang, which gives us a lot of confidence that the final leg of the orbital launch preparation is being carried out to the greatest standard. Speaking about Starbase, there has been just as much effort put into the ground system for Starship as there has been on the rocket. The launch tower is self-explanatory. It's a massive steel tower with a robotic claw arm attached. It's ridiculous but also brilliant. The chopstick-style components allow SpaceX to lift and put the booster and ship on the launch mount without needing a separate crane. These arms will eventually capture the booster and ship when they return to Earth, but that's for another video. The orbital launch mounts need to be more frequently addressed. This is the stand on which the rocket is mounted, but it's much more. One of the Starship's brilliant engineering tactics was to dump as many launch mechanisms as possible from the rocket to the launch mount. As a result, all of the equipment required for the initial starting and ignition of the Raptor engines are incorporated into the launch pad, making the rocket lighter and easier to construct. But aside from these technologies, advancements, the Starship launch pad has one exciting features we'd never seen before. It is built on top of a solid concrete slab. Every other rocket launch pad is built on top of a trench dug into the ground which acts as a flame diverter. There's a lot of fire that comes out the bottom of a rocket as lifts off and the flame diverter trench directs all of that excess fire and exhaust over the side and away from the launch pad which SpaceX did not do. So, when the Raptor engine lights up, all the flame and hot exhaust gas pounds directly into a slab of concrete which has proven to be an issue thus far. Because concrete does not like to get too hot, even in a well-curved slab, moisture will be trapped inside the stone that will expand if heated to a boiling temperature, causing the concrete to explode like a popcorn. This has been demonstrated in multi-engine static fire experiments at Starbase. Cameras caught a rain of stone shrapnel that extended for hundreds of meters surrounding the launch location. The chunks are so hot that they've ignited brush fires in neighboring areas, and as a result of this devastation, SpaceX needs to rip up the concrete pad beneath the launch mount and create a new one, which is a subsequently destroyed again. So, once again, we are still determining what will happen when 33 Raptor engines are fired into solid ground. At a full throttle, that will be around 7,600 metric tons of force. So the 33 static fire test of the very hefty booster is what we're looking for next. That will happen soon. It could have occurred by the time you watch this video. That test should be exciting and should go off without a hitch. The real test will be how well the new concrete slab holds up. If the Fondag RS is unharmed by the static fire, SpaceX may proceed to the orbital flight test, which could happen within days. However, if the engine thrust still tears up the concrete pad, SpaceX will need two weeks to rip up and replace it. This will be the limiting constraint in a Starship launch schedule. Even if a completely new launch pad is necessary, SpaceX can easily send this rocket into air by the end of the month. That is entirely reasonable. Does it reach space and what happens when it returns? Those are still unanswered questions. So, please share your theories in the comment section. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be updated for more upcoming videos like this. Before you leave, did you know that the future of Tesla is not on EVs? It's the Tesla Mega Pack. Well, if you want to know more, make sure to click and watch this video here. See you there.